Welcome to the Big Bear Homestead. Today is episode number 11 in our preparedness series. So today we're going to talk about food storage, part two, dehydrated. Okay, so today we're going to talk about dehydrating food. Now dehydrating food is not a new concept. Matter of fact, it's been around since the Egyptians, since ancient times. Now, what are some things that you dehydrate? Well, you can dehydrate meat. You can dehydrate apples, strawberries, bananas. As a matter of fact, at the end of this video, we were going, we're going to link our video on how to dehydrate pineapples. If you can think about it, want to test it out you can pretty much dehydrate just about anything so with that being said how does dehydrating something actually work okay so how does dehydrating work well dehydration works by lowering the moisture level of a certain item down to a point where it inhibits bacterial growth Okay, well, that's the science behind it. So, with that, I mean, actually, how long will our food last if we do this? Okay, now, when you're talking long-term food storage, the more things that you can do to this food item, obviously, will increase the length of time this food is good for. For example, if you can keep it in a place like in a root cellar in a dark corner where it's 55 degrees most of the time, it's, it's going to last longer. If you take that same item and vacuum seal it, put it in that spot, it's going to last longer. And same way with dehydrated food. If you dehydrate some pineapples, put it in a mason jar, vacuum seal it, put it in that cool dark place, it'll last longer. Now. Your average time for your de dehydrated items is about a year, year and a half. Now, if you stick them in that root cellar where it's about 55 degrees and you keep it and it stays relatively dark, most of the time you keep the, the light away from it, it can last up to about two years. You throw in the vacuum sealing inside the mason jar, it could obviously extend its life even longer. Now, we were, we're also going to add, at the end of this video, our video on vacuum sealing. But when you, it's no different than a football team. The more plays they have, the more successful they will be. The more things that you add into preserving this food, the longer it will last. Now, your commercially dehydrated items that take the moisture level down to like, 3% or less, <clears throat> now they obviously claim to last about 25 years. Unfortunately, with our home dehydrators, it's really hard in a home to be able to get your the moisture removed down to a 3% level. I mean, there are good dehydrators out there. There are good brands like the Nesco, the Presto, the Elite, the Excalibur. Now, we're also going to leave a link on our product review about our Excalibur dehydrator at the end. We absolutely love the Excalibur, and I just mentioned them other ones, even like that, the Hamilton, Hamilton Beach one. I mentioned those to say that, yes, there are other choices out there, but if you want my, uh, my opinion, my personal opinion, I, I would honestly say... Don't even go anywhere else but with to the Excalibur. It's, in my opinion, it's the best one on the market. Okay, well that does it for this video this week in our preparedness series. I hope you guys found this video informative, and I hope to see you back next week when we're going to start talking about rotating your stock. Thanks for coming by the Big Bear Homestead, and like always, have a nice day. Okay.
So today we're going to talk about dehydrating your food. Well, dehydrating food is not really a new concept. It's been around since the ancient times. Dehydrating food... I don't know where I was going with that. And action! Chickens, ducks, and sheep. Rabbits and... Pigs and cows. <laughs> action. Push the button. Yes. The button <laughs> has been pushed and action has been called. So talk. <laughs> I'm Jason. And I'm Robin. And we want to welcome you to the Big Bear Homestead. <laughs> and action. Chickens, ducks, and sheep. Rabbits and cows and... <laughs>